All right, back with another Quick Tip Tuesday. I just got back from WPPI in Las Vegas. I was there on behalf of an editing company talking about Lightroom and, and I was talking to professional photographers and I was shocked at how few professional photographers knew about today's Quick Tip. It's a feature in Lightroom that saves you a ton of time. And it's crazy they didn't know about it because I literally use this Quick Tip every single time that I use Lightroom. If you guys are digging these Quick Tip Tuesdays, make sure to hit the like button below. It helps, helps a ton. And, and subscribe, subscribe for more Quick Tip Tuesdays and maybe comment below. Let me know if you knew this Quick Tips a day. I, I'm very curious as to how many people knew about it versus how many people didn't. Don't be ashamed. Apparently a ton of professionals didn't know about it, so you're in good company. But if you're working in Lightroom a lot, Today's quick tip, you have to know. Because today's quick tip solves three major problems that you, you might be having in Lightroom. The first is massive file sizes. If you are shooting one of the new Sonys, or maybe you're on one of the new Canons, the file sizes these days are massive. My Sony a7R II shoots 44 megapixel images. 42, 44 something in the 40s, which means every time I press the shutter button, it is a 28 megabyte compressed file, and the uncompressed version is ridiculous. So if I shoot a thousand photos and I drop those into Lightroom, we're talking 28 gigabytes worth of data. And then I'm telling Lightroom, hey Lightroom, I wanna be able to flip through those really quickly, make edits, keep moving, flip, blip, 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 blip. <laughs> I wanna work with them quickly and Lightroom Lightroom rarely wants to work with massive files like that quickly. The second problem that we're fixing is that with so many huge files, most of you are running around with external hard drives and you're editing from the external hard drive, which is a much slower process than editing on the internal hard drive. So your raw images live here, you plug it into your computer, you start editing, and you're waiting for the files to be moving back and forth for it to be able to read them from the hard drive and then, and then, it's slower. But with a thousand photos being something like 28 gigabytes, how would you be able to have multiple weddings on here, multiple shoots, thousands of images to be able to edit on your laptop? Today, we're gonna, we're gonna fix that also. And then lastly, maybe you are a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer or a commercial photographer and you actually send your massive batches of images out for edit, which is what I do with my wedding business. I shoot the images, I import them, I send them out for edit, they come back, I make final edits on them, so I, I still do see them after they're edited, but someone else takes care of all the color correcting for me, but, but how would I send 3,000, 4,000 images to a lab? If 28 gigabytes is 1,000 images, and I was trying to send 4,000 images, we're talking 130, a bunch of gigabytes, which would be ridiculous to upload to the internet, try to send it to somebody, have them edit it, try to send all that back. That, that's not how to do it. But today's quick tip will solve that problem also. So today we are gonna solve all three of those problems with one feature inside Lightroom called Smart Previews. Yes, Smart Previews. If you don't already know what Smart Previews are, Basically, you're telling Lightroom, hey, please create a very small version of every single photo that's in my catalog, or a small selection of photos that I choose for you to make smart previews of. And this much smaller version of the original raw photo still has all the depth for color, so you can color correct, you can make all your levels perfect. You can't, you can't zoom a ton on smart previews. On the original file, you can zoom a bunch, full size. On the smart preview, you can zoom a little bit. It's a smaller resolution file, but it still has all the depth information so I can make my edits. I can pull my highlights, I can pump my shadows, I can do everything else that you do in Lightroom except, except zoom. And by creating smart previews, we take the 28 gigabytes of raw photos and we bring that down to something like 150 megabytes, which is much easier to work with in Lightroom. The only downside of this is that it's a little bit of a process. It takes a little bit of time to build those smart previews. They don't automatically get made. You have to tell Lightroom, hey Lightroom, please build me some smart previews. And then, and then you have to wait while Lightroom does that. But it's super beneficial. 
let me show you why by jumping into Lightroom. Okay, here we are in Lightroom, and, and there's two ways to make smart previews inside of Lightroom. The very first way is when we are importing a folder. All right, we're gonna go in here and click Selections, and inside here, I have a bunch of our images from our Hawaii trip last year. So it looks like we have 288 photos or 11 gigabytes worth of photos, which which is a lot of data. But inside here, Lightroom, I have this little option right here. On import, I can tell it, build smart previews. And then all I do is hit import, and Lightroom is gonna do two processes. The first process it's gonna do is import all my images into the catalog. And then right after that's done, it's gonna start building smart previews. It's gonna take all 288 of those photos, and it's gonna make a very small version of each and every photo. And if you look right up here in the left-hand side, I can click this and I can see it is, it is currently building my smart previews for me. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. It's going pretty quick, and that process is dependent on your computer. If your computer is slower, this process will take a little bit longer. With faster processors, it'll go, it'll go faster. But, you know, tell it to make smart previews. Go take a nap. Go for a walk. Make a coffee. A coffee? Why is this coffee? <laughs> And a dialog box pops up, says smart previews were built or already exist for 288 photos. It took, it took a little over four minutes to process 288 photos into smart previews. This is a pretty fast computer, but, but yeah. And once that process is done, you can click on any image down on the bottom here. And when you look up here in the histogram, you'll see underneath it, it'll say original plus smart preview, which means that that image right now is connected to the original raw image and the smart preview that Lightroom has built. Now that's the first way to create smart previews in Lightroom, but if you have a bunch of photos already in your Lightroom, how do you create smart previews? Super simple, go to your grid view, grab the first one, hit Command A so that all of your images are selected, go up to the top here, hit Library, drop down to Previews, and Build Smart Previews. And since I've already done that, it'll, uh, it won't make any, because I've already got them. All right, again, let's jump into one of these images here. Here's a, here's a very cute one of Eleanor being lifted into the air like a, like a baby Simba. <laughs> and again, if you look up here, it says original plus smart preview. We're gonna jump over to our develop tab and still right here, it says original plus smart preview, which means that if I start working on these images right now, Lightroom is gonna default to showing me the original. So if I take this image, I can zoom way in, I can zoom back out. I can go to the next image, I can zoom way in, I can zoom back out. That's a pretty good sign. I'm working with the original. So how do we disconnect the originals from, from the images we're looking at? Super simple. We're gonna jump back over here to our Finder. And in Finder, I'm gonna find the folder where the RAWs are. For me, I've moved all these selections right here. Here is all of my RAW photos. So all I need to do is rename this folder with something. And what I like to do is hit Return, go to the front, put TMP doop, for temporary, and then, and then I've renamed the folder. And since Lightroom is looking for a folder named two dash selections, and now it's TMP two dash selections, it, it can't find the originals. So we go back to Lightroom and boom, now it only says smart preview up here. If I go to one that we haven't looked at, I go to zoom in. Oh, it's still zooming in quite a bit. Yeah, there we go. That's a smart preview. That's it. That's about as far as you can zoom on a smart preview. Let's actually see, let's see how much smaller it is. So the selections folder is, these are where the, the RAWs are. 12.2 gigabytes is in my raw folder. But you can see that my smart preview file is right here. That is, that is all of my smart previews and that is 264 megabytes. So now that the originals are disconnected from the Lightroom catalog, instead of Lightroom trying to access 12 gigabytes of data, it's, it's only working with 264 megabytes of data for the whole catalog. And that is more better. <laughs> because when we're editing tons of files, we wanna edit fast. We wanna be able to flip through Lightroom, I wanna make changes, I wanna copy paste and move things around as quickly as possible. And when my computer is constantly trying to access 12 gigabytes of data, that, that process is much slower. 
And when I go back to Lightroom, I can see now I can I can fly through these images. I can do I can do anything I want to these images. I can I can put settings on them. I can start working with them really quickly. Do lots of things to them and and I, I can, there's no lag. There's no lag. I just blah, 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 as fast, as fast as I can work, Lightroom can keep up. So I make all my color edits while it's connected to the Smart Preview. Now I'm ready to export. I just go back to Finder. I go to that folder. Here's a huge, huge important point. If you haven't been paying attention, look, look up now. Look at the screen. You have to rename the folder back to the exact name that you had it when you imported it. So for me, I hit return, I go to the beginning, I just get rid of this first bit, and boom, back to Lightroom. Magically, the original and the smart preview are reconnected to the original image. And then now, when I export the image with all my edits on it, I get a full resolution image. A super fast way to edit a ton of images and then and then reconnect them to the RAWs and be able to export them. Oh, and to solve the, the hard drive people, put your RAWs on the external hard drive, put the Lightroom catalog and smart previews on your laptop. Then, then just disconnect your hard drive. Now the original files are here. On your computer is the smart previews and Lightroom catalog. You can do all your edits in a coffee shop, just, just with your computer. Jump on a plane, go, go anywhere. Do it in the toilet, I don't care. Ew, don't do it in the toilet. Then, once your edits are totally done, just go just go grab your external hard drive, plug it back in, and boom, you're in business exporting images. And then for our third case where we're actually having another company edit all of our images, we send them smart previews and the catalog file. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna bring all my images in, I'm gonna create smart previews, I'm just gonna take that smart preview file, I'm gonna take my Lightroom catalog file, send those two off to shoot that edit. They're gonna edit all my images, send the catalog file back to me, and when I open the catalog file where they've made all the edits, it will automatically reconnect to, to my RAWs. Then boom, I hit export, and I have full-size exported edited images. And I never had to send them the RAW files. It's like magic. Lightroom, you're very clever, and I really appreciate really appreciate this feature. It's probably the feature that sped up my editing workflow in the first place. Probably the, the biggest feature that changed my editing. Because there's nothing more frustrating than, than feeling like you're working really fast and then Lightroom not being able to keep up with you because it's waiting for the image to load and your, your mind is like, no, come on computer. <laughs> and that is your Quick Tip Tuesday for this week. I will see you guys next week. Hopefully I'm gonna have another one this week because my 1R is working again. It was it wasn't working. It was it was the pre-production one, and then when the new software came out, something happened and it didn't work at all. But now, but now it's working again. Listen, wait. Ah, <laughs> the 1R is alive. I'm very excited. Remember a while ago now, like two months ago, when I got it and I was like, here's my first look. I'll show you photos later. I couldn't I couldn't show you any photos because it bricked itself and it was it was broken. But now it's fixed. Right. And I'm gonna go use it and then I'll tell you what I think about it. Maybe this week, maybe next week. Either way, like this video, comment, please, and subscribe. Subscribing's cool. I like it when you subscribe and and say things below. I like to talk to you too. This thing this thing is clever. I do like, I like the modularity of it. It's very, very genius, very smart. Um, boop, 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 boop. They are very smart guys here at one of, what was that? It wasn't even a nerd accent. Oh, it's too late, too late at night. Oh, I'm tired.